Welcome back to Boring Reviews. Boring Land. Oh, Come just on. kidding. Blasphemer. Oh, Hello, my. Boring Review Nation. Kind of pointless. We know all things. All right. Welcome back to Boring Reviews. Nick here. Gabe, the Night Watchman. I almost cut him off, my bad. And we are excited for another music reaction. So now it's time for some Metallica. He tells me he hasn't listened knowingly to any Metallica, which is just crazy to me. For me and everyone, all of us have a story of when we fell in love with our own music. Right. At least for me, it was my parents' music until I branched off my own. Metallica, it was first Bush. I'm not sure if you know Bush at all. And then it was Metallica, my second band that I just went nuts for and I couldn't get enough of the music. And luckily at that time, in the mid 90s, there was plenty of music to choose from right. and they were still making some music, but their heyday was the 80s to the right. early 90s. They went nuts and they just exploded with popularity. And we're gonna play for him, Nothing Else Matters from the Black Album, their self-titled album that came, I believe in 1990. And this album just took, it was like one of the top five best-selling albums of all time at one point, right. if I'm not mistaken. This just, catapulted them to another level. So the original bassist, Cliff Burton, he passed away, unfortunately, before this album came out. They went out and got Jason Newstead, and he was their bassist for a while until he pieced out, and they got another one after that. But they were already a big band, gaining traction. Master Puppets was before this, but then this one just exploded them. And my favorite, I mean, the most popular song is Inner Sandman, but I didn't want to play that for him. I wanted to play for him one of my favorite, if not my favorite Metallica song of all time, Nothing Else Matters. I think I said like four times. <laughs> Are you excited for this? I'm definitely excited. You know, it's funny. The only rock song that I know, and some people will argue with me because I've said this and they're like, well, that's not rock. It's grunge. And I think I might have mentioned this on the last video. It was basically, and I know I might have listened to others, like you said, in passing in the radio or whatever, but that I know, like, lyric for lyric, and I know who the band or whatever, and it was Nirvana, Kurt Cobain, man. He destroyed that. Even the people in the hood, Smells Like Teen Spirit was like, I don't know, it just broke barriers. It went, it went crazy. I, yes. I don't know why. It just broke barriers, and, you know, like, my brother, who's a hardcore rapper knows who Kurt Cobain... Rappers will talk about Kurt Cobain in their songs or whatever. He had this uh, ability to, to like, transcend genres, really. You know what I mean? But as far as, like, Metallica, though, I've heard the name of the bands. I've seen the shirt. Like, uh, uh, what's another one? Uh, Leonard Skinner and Pink Pantera, all this stuff. To say I know their songs? No. To say, like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I listen to their music? You said Pink no. Pantera. That's awesome. You're going to Pink Floyd and Pantera. I I really don't know. I don't know. And what to Pink say. is by herself too. She's a you well, know, hip hop or uh, she's a pop pop artist. Yeah, Pink. Yeah. I know the artist Pink. I thought I, yeah. I, kinda, I thought it was Pink Pantera. Like, I didn't, <laughs> yeah, Pantera is just by themselves. Pantera. Super rock. Okay, I didn't. I didn't really I love that. it. But um, you know, <laughs> Metallica. I know. Another thing that I know about rock, and you can maybe confirm this, most of these guys are in the 27 Club. Are there any of these guys in the 27 Club? Because, no, like, they're before no. 27, because you said I mean, that. again, Cliff Burton, I don't know how young he was. He was young. He was young. Like, And I guess it was, like, a theme in rock, right? Like, a lot of, uh, including Kurt Cobain, a lot of really good mus musicians pass before the age, or after 27. And if you usually think about it, like, when we talked about Biggie and Pac, they both died before 27. So uh, maybe it's not just a rock thing. Maybe it's just a music industry thing. Yeah. In, in certain, let us know in the comments if you even heard about the 27 the i think they, they call it oh, the 27 yeah. club thing or whatever yeah. jimmy <laughs> hendrix kurt cobain yeah i, I just mean, thought about that big and pop both died before they were 27 Janis Joplin, she might be in there i mean there's a lot of them in there bruce lee for crying out loud right right that's crazy yeah. man that's wow and brandon lee is not too unfortunately close after that but anyways i'm excited and as he's talking i'm thinking about red hot chili peppers have, have you heard a lot of their music uh, oh i can't wait there's so <laughs> much to introduce him to <laughs> And again, if you're new to it, I'm being introduced to some rap songs I've never heard before and rock for him. But let's go ahead and get into this. Please do us a huge favor. If you like our reaction, if you like this idea of videos that we're doing, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps tremendously and it really helps support our channel. We're trying to get to 100,000 subscribers. Help us get there by the end of 2023. Almost there. And one more thing about rock, especially um, heavy metal like this is look out for the guitar solo. That's all I'm going to say. There's always a solo in there. What, well, also has a drum solo, obviously. Um, but yeah, here we go. I'll try to point it out. And let me know if this is like, you. oh, I've heard this before. I mean, just this opening riff is so famous. And 
yes, they had the hair back then. Is that not a thing now? Well, in the 80s, the hair bands, you had White Snake, you had Metallica, you had, I mean, everybody for crying out loud at that time. When they cut their hair, everyone's like, no, you betrayed us. Jeez Louise, so young. Dude, I'm gonna be super, uh, 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 not just mental, I don't even know what the word is. I, when I thought of Metallica, bro, I thought of got like tatted up guys, and you know what I mean? Like, they got some tattoos now. Like, three of these guys are still in the band today. The only one's not is Jason Newsted, the new bassist. So close, no matter how far. That's James Hector, he's a singer. Come on, Riley. They got a naked lady picture next to them. You guys lost a lot of popularity when they went after Napster, remember that? The whole Napster nonsense? Where you can just download music for free, All right? They went after trying to protect their music and they helped a lot of bands in the process, but they took a lot of the heat for doing it and saying, no, we're not just giving away all our hard work for free. That's crazy, yeah. I didn't even realize they were part of that. It really hurt their popularity for a long time. I kind of had a resurgence with the whole Stranger Things. I'm not sure if you watched their recent season. One of their songs in that. I never opened myself this way. Life is ours. We live it our way. Talking about a real artist 
writes the song, sings the song, plays an instrument on the song. Get out of here, pop artist. <laughs> Lars the drummer wearing that headband over his headphones that was throwing me off <laughs> like what are you doing man so I mean that is it again I'm taking an interesting path to introduce you to some of these bands because this they're heavy metal okay right, right, right. they're known for really bringing it headbanging type music and I introduce you with a ballad, but I just, I absolutely love that song. I can listen to it a million times a day. Uh, what'd you think about that? I loved it. I absolutely loved it. You know, um, his voice, man, I think that he's got such a way of, of delivering each note and he's got a powerful voice, but it's very soothing at the same time. And again, song, like yeah. what threw me off in the video is when you think of rock bands, you see, and I guess you saw a little bit of the leather there, but you see the leather jackets, you see the tattoos, you see the spiky chains, all that good stuff. Maybe I'm just thinking about too much Kiss, and I know that everybody doesn't look like Kiss, <laughs> yeah. right? I've never heard a Kiss song, but I know who Kiss is just because oh, like, heard a few of Kiss the songs. commercials and Gene Simmons and stuff like that, and the guy's been on reality TV or whatever, but like that's my image of when you think of rock, and... Like, these guys did not look like that whatsoever. And yet, like you said, they're known for their headbanging, heavy metal stuff. So I'm excited to see more, hear more Metallica and hear some of their harder stuff, like you said, headbanging stuff. But yeah, I'm a ballad guy. I love being able to listen to lyrics. And and you mentioned that when we talked about how I chose two kind of ballads, really ghetto ballads, when I introduced I you to rap. Ballads. You know what I mean? I love um, it. I would say is that is that the, the the guy with the mutton chops? Is he still like in the band? Yeah, he's still man. That the leader was of the band. Him and him and the drummer Lars Ulrich. They wrote. I, I would say at least seventy percent of all their songs they wrote them together. Oh, wow. I mean they are a writing tandem, writing duo. Kurt Hammett, who is the lead guitarist, he's always been there. He's helped with some songs, obviously, but it's mostly those two guys. And yes, you always think of James Hetfield as the front man because he is the the right. lead singer. You're right. But I mean, he plays guitar. I'm gonna say he crushed that solo, yeah, though, dude. Absolutely. I mean, I still prefer the the the, the solo from um, uh, uh, "Smells Like Teen Spirit," like that that one yeah, guitar yeah, riff or whatever. Classic, yeah. But that was a pretty good riff right there too. And I mean, like, man, um, excited to hear more from him. Excited to hear more from him. And I think that that's the biggest thing. You know, for me, it was whatever was on the radio stations, and I don't know how it even happened, but. I always listened to Hot 97. It didn't matter. That's what the, the radio station I listened to. I never heard this on Hot 97, but I did hear uh, Smells Like Teen Spirit on Hot 97. So I think it's, I, I don't know why it was able to, to like, you know what I mean? Make that jump yeah, to like more hot, urban, uh, um, to more urban and, and really just street culture where this didn't. But uh, that's probably why I didn't have that influence in listening to it. And this is back before serious radio, y'all, or even YouTube and the internet. Can you funny. imagine having YouTube as a kid and be any music you want, any song you want? Boom. No, absolutely to not. You listen to stuff on you the radio. Wait till it came on the radio, or you bought yeah. the, the the cassette tape. Oh yeah, or you had to go out and buy the cassette tapes. Yes, cats and kitties. You would buy a cassette tape or the and, CD. And, you know what I mean? Well, see. These came on later on. Later yes. on, remember? Did you ever fix a cassette tape where it would pop? So you would go and you would take some tape and tape it back oh, together, or whatever. Can. <laughs> Didn't always Come work on. out. You know, like give me one more listen to play. And then <laughs> what you would do is when you knew that a tape had popped in a certain area, you would listen it, and right before it got to that part, you would stop and fast forward through it and oh, then play because you didn't want to play that part because then, and it then would, you wore out it. that part of the tape. One of my favorite things I thought it was so slick when I was ten years old. I, I asked for, we called them boombox back then, right? And it had the CD player and it had the double cassette. So I could literally make my own mixtapes 
from either the CD the or from a cassette. Tape. And I would just go nuts with that. I would always make a mixtape for like any kind of road trip me and my family went on and this or that. And my dad, because I had some of his songs that were still some of my favorites too. When one of his songs came on, no joke, every single time, his hand would go to the volume and he would turn up one notch. Yeah. That was his way of saying he liked it. If it went to a song he didn't like, he would bring it down one notch. That is like that was the signal. So when I saw that hand, I got that validation. Yes. And then sometimes, whether it's Creed, another band you should probably introduce him to, whether it was Metallica, there was some of my music that he actually listened to. And he would ask me, is this this or that? Yeah. Okay, this is a pretty good song. Again, validation. But that's awesome. Music is amazing. It's so transcendent. It's it's not just from genre or it's not just from decade. Anyone can enjoy it. It's just about getting access to it and being introduced to it. Let us know what else we should have him listen to. I have a pretty good list just from this conversation of now it's going on my head about what I want next. But let us know. Let's get that together and let's keep this going Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, we know all things.